the mystery that is Tyler Johnson. <laughs> I I want to I want to start off. I'm curious. So like a lot of us, a lot of us in the a lot of us pipers, probably a lot of people in any sort of special interest <clears throat> niche group. We, a lot of us have like a bagpiping email address, you know, that we like yes. use for piping stuff. That or it's just our general email that we made when we were teenagers and we were all hyped about piping, whatever it is. And yours has something to do with green, green piper or something like that. Yeah, mine is Green Piper zero <laughs> seven. So what's the story behind so, that? Well, see, the funny thing is now I shy away from using it because green and pipe have like two different, you know, has a completely different association now compared to when I created it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's not one I I really share, but I've had it for so long that I've just held on to it, you know. So yeah, Green Piper Piper because I play the bagpipes and green because. That was my favorite color when I set up the email address. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and don't feel bad about it. As far as I can tell, that is also common amongst all of us, that all of us made these these names <laughs> or email addresses and we regretted it later, but it was too late. <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's, I mean, really nothing more to it than that. It was just like, yeah, I love, love piping and I love green. Yeah. And everything else that was obvious and easy to choose was already taken by somebody else. So yeah. That's that's the story behind that one. Well, there you go. So we, we we maybe shouldn't put out the call for everybody in Utah when they see you to be like, hey, Green Piper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I'm not too worried about my employment prospects and that kind of stuff. They're going to get. Yeah, okay. it's, it, yeah they're, as long as you're not swearing at me too much, I'll take it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so uh, what about um, what about the uh, I, I, I don't. This could sound awkward, so I got to clarify. You have a tattoo that's on your arm, so it's not like I uh, know about any, you know, secret tattoos or anything like that. But <laughs> you've got a piping-inspired tattoo as well. Is there a story behind that? Um, yeah, a, a little bit. Um, I guess the the short story of this one, it's it's actually not a piping-inspired tattoo. Crazy enough, you well, think I thought so, it was a it's... piper. It, it's a guy in a kilt and he's wearing a Prince Charlie jacket. I guess um, I only have like a vague, you know, I don't like see you every day or anything. So I, yeah, I was yeah. kind of imagining that it was a piper like walking into some trees or something, but maybe I just saw it. Yeah, like, like in your in your mind, exactly. And and having not knowing the backstory behind it, anybody would think it's a piper just because it's, you know, I'm into piping and yeah. dude wearing a kilt walking into the trees like, like you mentioned. But yeah, the tattoo is actually um, a picture that I took. Uh, that I had an artist put onto my arm. It was when I was young in, in Scotland uh, for a scout camp, actually. And it's on the grounds of Blair Castle. And you can actually like pull it up on Google Earth or uh, you know, Google Maps, whatever they call it now, and uh, do the street view of the road walking up to the castle. And it's just lined by these giant trees. Mm. And um, the picture is actually my best friend. Oh, um, gotcha. Uh, and we were in Scotland at Blair Castle uh, for a scout camp, actually. And he was walking down the road from Blair Castle. And you can check this out on Google Maps. But uh, the the street is just lined with these giant trees. And the reason I, I turned it into a tattoo was uh, for several reasons. Uh, one of them was, of course, because of um, just the big part that piping and, and the music has played in my life. And uh, the part that kind of that whole experience has, you know, played in my life at that point as well. So um, just a just a constant reminder to me, um, you know, of just a, <laughs> that experience and, and kind of my mindset and and how I envisioned the world at that point. And then, of course, just the connection to the Scottish music as well. Yeah. I've never heard of like scouting is big here where we live. I've never heard of someone going to Scotland for a scout camp or for a scout camp. What was a scout camp? Now that's what they should have called it. That's exactly. a marketing opportunity. <laughs> what was what was that all about? What was that like? Was that like one of the jamborees or something like that? Yeah, actually, it was really random how I got hooked up with it because it wasn't like my local scout group or anything that went. But I was at a local scout jamboree here when I was now oh, thirteen or fourteen. Had to be thirteen. Wait, which and, one? Which one was it, Tyler? Was it the one that was out in the middle of a cow field? No, it was. It was much. It was on a much smaller scale. It was like at Barnes Park in Kaysville. Gotcha. And it was for a few hours one Saturday. And because I was I, a scout as a kid too, mostly. Oh I, yeah. Mostly, I was obliged to be. Honestly, my parents were going to let me get my driver's license if I wasn't an Eagle <laughs> Scout. But, but I was just. Yeah. You know, we, we might have gone to some of the same events and not known each other yet. That's all. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure we did. But yeah, this this one was. Um, on a much smaller scale. Anyways, there was this guy there named Pat Riley 
and uh, he had a booth set up and he was wearing a kilt and for all I knew he was a Scottish guy standing there, you know, so we went over to talk to him and turns out, Hey, yeah, we've got the scout camp that goes on every two years on the grounds of the Blair castle. Wow. That's really cool. And, uh, so anyways, um, ended up working, you know, working and earning the money to go and, uh, is, is a month long trip. This, the scout camp over there is like 10 days long and it's international, you know, so you've got scouts from all over the world and most parts of the world, the scouts are, inclusive of boys and girls so that was my first experience like walking into this and there's like girls in the tent right next to you or whatever you know coming from the bsa you're like wait a second this is not allowed (laughs) it just seems so odd but i mean it was it was also no big deal at the same time you know lots of fun but anyways at the end of the camp well let's let's be honest tyler it was a lot more fun right (laughs) 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 it could have been for some i was too young to really get it at that Uh, point i see i see um but uh yeah, so at the end of the camp, then you go home with a Scottish host family for another five days or something like oh, wow. that. So oh, it was just, it's incredible. So um, anytime I come across somebody that asks about that experience, because they, they still do, they've been doing it for, well, I don't know how how long, but um, every once in a while, I'll have somebody reach out to me and say, hey, I, I heard you you went to this. Um, oh, and sure, just, yeah. But man, if, if any kid ever got a chance to go to that, do whatever it takes, sell whatever organs you need to <laughs> and do it. It's, um, it was the, incredible. The Girl Scouts sell cookies here in the U S but the Boy Scouts, they'll sell well, a kidney. Yeah. <laughs> and Absolutely. The great thing, if they've got the right merit badges, they can extract it and sew, sew it up afterward as well, all by themselves. Hey, so. Now that's, that is, uh, that's as efficient as you can get. Yeah. Now it's, it's funny. Cause like, I don't know if it's only me that has this idea, but like, of course, like growing up and participating in the boy Scouts of America specifically, it, it feels like a very American institution, but one must remember if it started in the UK, if I'm not oh, yeah. mistaken, and it is an international thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's just the scouts everywhere else. Yeah. Um, well, I shouldn't say everywhere else, but many other places yeah. uh, throughout the world, it's just the scouts. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's really yeah. cool. That's really cool. So, so when you walked up to this, you know, for all you knew, a Scottishman, uh, a Scotsman at this uh, scout jamboree, were you at that time already enthusiastic about Scotland, about bagpipes? Like, where did that start for you? When did you first encounter bagpipes? When did you first think maybe I'll play them? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I I couldn't tell you where Scotland was at that point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I I'd, I'd seen pictures and encyclopedias of of people wearing kilts and playing bagpipes and that kind of stuff. But outside of that, I really had no clue. And so even when I was like, yeah, Scotland, that sounds nice. uh, I had, I had no idea where it was or really what (laughs) it was about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's actually where my connection to the music started was when I went over there. Did you hear pipes live while you were there or was it just kind of in the ambience? I did. Yeah. So there were, there were some, you know, Scottish scouts that played the pipes, uh, just a couple here and there. Um, and then up at the castle, there was, uh, th- there was a piper every day that would go out and just kind of like walk in front of the castle and play at a certain time. I want and, that job, man. Oh, no kidding. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, that, those were my first kind of experiences hearing the bagpipes in person. And I was just blown away. Yeah. What a um, setting to encounter them. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And then especially being, that young and having those kind of new experiences and, and, and connected to the music. I mean, that's kind of what got me hooked. So I came home from that and it was in the summer and, uh, just mentioned to my parents, like, Oh, you know, it'd be cool to learn the bagpipes one day, whatever, you know, um, just like it would be cool to do anything when you're a kid, you know, you, you have all these cool ideas of hobbies and such and most oh, of them yeah. just fade away but but um, at that point like everything is a possibility oh yeah yeah so yeah. anyways for my birthday that year my parents got me one of those uh learn how to play bagpipes kits and it's like uh, you've probably seen it it's in this red box this red rectangular box yeah with a piper on the front it's got a little rose, rosewood practice chanter in it and a uh, a book to teach yourself how to play the bagpipes of course which you know, what else do you need? Right. That's and, all you uh, need. That's everybody will tell you. Everybody in the piping world will tell you that's how you should start. That's the best way to start for sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Teach yourself on a, <laughs> on a splintery rosewood practice chanter. And, and this was, and the funny thing too, is this, it really wasn't that long ago, but 
even though the internet wasn't around or, or, or was around, it wasn't really there wasn't a whole lot of easily accessible information about piping. There wasn't yeah, YouTube the, and all this kind of stuff. There wasn't a Piper's Dojo yet or anything like that, right? No, exactly. So for all I knew, this was what you did. This is how yeah. you learned. So I'm trying to follow the uh, the little teach yourself book, and I actually learned with my right hand on top. How was um, that, man? <laughs> for all I knew, that's what you did. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, we should be inclusive for all the lefties <laughs> out there. It's okay. Go ahead and play weird. You, I mean, you're, you know, you mess you're doing everything a, up. You mess up the yeah, circle. You, you mess up mass bands, but fine. <laughs> go ahead. You're doing it wrong, but we'll put up with it. <laughs> right. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, so, so I, I, I somehow came across a community class um, that Ross and Justin were teaching. So was um, this pre Wasatch and District, or was this? Yeah, gotcha. yeah, it was pre Wasatch and District. So it was still Utah Pipe Band at the time, and um, I remember it was like eighty bucks for an eight week course. And in my in my mind at that time, because I was fifteen years old or something, you know, eighty bucks is a lot of money. Right. So um, I took the class. I went down, and it was and they held the community class right after the Utah Pipe Band practice that they did at Bountiful High School. And so I showed up early right at the tail end of their practice. And I saw all these guys standing outside playing their guys and girls, of course, playing the pipes. And I was just blown away, you know, just that yeah. first band setting of people getting together and jamming. And it was just like, Oh my gosh. Great that you showed up the for the ending it too, because like by then they're all warmed up and tuned. <laughs> and well, hopefully anyway, right. Reasonable right. Tune. <laughs> for, for all I knew they were the best in the world, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, just kind of stuck with it from there. So those guys are the ones that, you know, really got me set on the right path as far as putting my left hand on top. And right, what was that and, like to have to relearn the other way around? Well, I, I wasn't that proficient yet. So yeah. although I'd built some weird habits, I mean, none of the habits that I built were useful, anyways. I got you. I mean, like at that point, were you mostly like playing maybe the scale, but you hadn't like started doing like D throws with the wrong hand or anything like that? Right, right. Because in that instruction book, they don't even have any embellishments aside from like G grace notes, from what I remember. Oh, I see. Um, so you, I, I learned to play very basic versions of like Scotland the Brave or what have you, and it's just only a couple G grace notes throughout the tune, um, and that was all I knew. Interesting, interesting. You know, I've, I've, your that story. You'd mentioned that to me once. I don't remember what the context was, probably like a, a branch meeting or something. And that has come back to my mind a few times because as we've been trying as we've, as we've been trying to put together materials at our free class at Garden Valley's free class down further south, we've had a few people go through who have a really hard time looking at a diagram the way it usually is, where it's like a paper uh -huh. facing you. Uh huh. And we found that if we just take the graphic and flip it around upside down, for some people that's a way easier way to learn. Because they feel like their hands need to go backward if they're if it's a mirror image, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I wonder to what degree, like, there's just you know your your brain works one way or the other, and it's kind of a you know maybe there's something in your DNA that decides which one <laughs> kind of works best for you. I know I have no I have no clue, but that makes a lot of sense. That uh, yeah, flipping that image would be extremely helpful. Yeah, like like it, so that like the bottom of the chanter is at the top, but you're looking at it, you know, the way you're looking down at it, it actually matches your fingers instead of mirroring you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no. anyway, that's a that's a tangent. Sorry. I, let's let's not let's not get distracted from the real no. the real focus here, which is which is you. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, it, 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 to to be to be fair though, like honestly, I think the community classes you guys put on are incredible. I mean, it's one of those things where kind of like the story that Larry was telling right after Braveheart came out, and all uh, these yeah, people were yeah. just fired up and want to learn bagpipes. And he started off with seven people around the table, and then it faded down to you know faded out to five, and then finally just one. Right. Um, and you know, for all you think, I mean, you're it's this obscure instrument, anyways, and uh, definitely not an easy one to to learn or master by any means. But you'd never you never know like what kind of impact it's going to have. Like you mentioned that one student came back and was registering her son to play and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, that's, yeah, it's just very cool. Yeah. Well, th thank you. Go on. Pra praise everything that we do. <laughs> Tell me more, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> um, so what about like other stuff around bagpipes? Have you ever tried your hand at drumming or, or, or drum majoring or are you interested in these things or are you just like really happy to be a Highland Piper? You know, I, 
I love the pipes. Um, I think if I was to branch out, I would, I would love to do some snare drumming. Um, I've, I've never actually tried it. Don't really have any current skills to back it up, but I think that would be something awesome just to learn some rudimentary stuff and, and, uh, maybe progress a little bit from there. Um, and then of course, you know, one of, one more of those things, like I was mentioning before, one of these dreams I have in my mind, it would be so cool when I grow up to learn how to play the inland pipes or, oh, I'm um, you, man. You know, things like that. Uh, I've gotten into small piping quite a bit and love that. But, uh, yeah, you are, I was surprised, um, to find out that you had also been following the Lindsay system chanter for small pipes. Um, and you got a print and play chanter printed up for yourself. I did. Have you, have you messed with that very much? Uh, I have. Unfortunately, I've I've been more frustrated with it than yeah, loving it. Yeah, I'm having a similar <laughs> similar experience. <laughs> Tried several reads and all sorts of things, and it's I can get it to sound okay, but not not the way I prefer yet. Which I, I suspect that, of course, the ones that you have like a pipe maker make probably play a little easier and stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sure, and I'm, I'd imagine that his actual like Lindsay Chanter is incredible. Yeah. Um, but. I don't the, the really want to drop. Of course, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, of course, and it's uh, it's a easier way to kind of get your head around the extended octave or extended range and all that kind of stuff without dropping four hundred bucks on a new chanter for your right. small pipes. Yeah. I was speaking of which, though. What what kind of what kind of small pipes do you have, and also what kind of Highland pipes do you have? Um. So my small pipes are, um, they're McCallum's. They're the Fred Morrison. Ooh, um, those are like my impression at least is that these are these are kind of the holy grail right now like like those i, I love listening to fred morrison play them in his youtube demos and stuff but like these seem nice these seem really nice i i really like them um in fact so i actually i actually bought these ones from fred directly whoa uh, wait wait like, like you did you meet the man yeah what? yeah so uh, i i went to winter i've gone to winter storm a couple times out in kansas city yeah Jealous. and uh Hey, shouldn't we have? A, should we? Shouldn't we have? A, we should start a local event, a competing event, and we'll call it Desert Storm here, <laughs> here in Utah. Wouldn't that be awesome? Man, I think I think it's it's a keyword that we'd be able to to overtake pretty quickly. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. You you were in Winter Storm though. Yeah. So, um, Fred Fred's an instructor out there for small piping, uh, pretty regularly, I guess, um, which I didn't realize. I just I I, I went out there and saw that he was on the roster for people teaching. And I was like, oh, oh man, so I've watched like all of his videos. Surprise, huh? Yeah, I was like, man, I've watched all of his videos. I don't even own a set of small pipes, but i got to meet Fred, you know? So I go to his class, and it was just very laid back. Most everybody in there had a set of small pipes, whatever make. Um, and he would just kind of talk them through, like, the philosophy of small piping and all this kind of stuff. And it was really cool. Anyways, at the at the end of the class, I walked up to him and I was like, hey, um, I, don't, I actually don't have a set of small pipes. And I'm really interested in getting some. Like, would you happen to be selling any that you have with them or I have with you? And he said, actually, yeah, I probably could sell these, but let me contact my wife and uh, I can let you know what the price would be if, or, you know, if it's possible or whatever. Yeah. So anyways, he told me and it was way cheaper than I could have gotten them through yeah. any other channel. Wait, when I say like, way cheap. Was cheap, it like the set that he was playing for yeah. the... What? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, and I don't know like his history with them. I don't uh, like they. I don't think but they're like at least his playing pipes. Them there that day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least he's touched them. <laughs> yeah. Which so I guess, I guess he sets all of the sets up, right? But like he was sitting there in front of you playing them like that. That does make him special. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was pretty. You know, for me, like big time fangirl moment that I was just trying to play really low key. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'd be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to get them. You know, if you could or whatever. You didn't um, say anything weird like I'm never gonna wash the blowpipe or anything like <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually, their bellows blown. Thank goodness, because oh, okay, that's okay. that. Yeah, I, I can't get behind the mouth blown ones. Uh, you know, from somebody else. So yeah. Anyways, go back to his class the next day. He said, "Come back to you know, come back tomorrow, and I'll let you know what I find out." So I came back, and he said, "Yeah, I can sell them too. However, I can't give you the bellows. The bellows are mine." Mm, um so i was like okay that's fair and i had no idea really how important it was to have 
like how how hard it was to get bellows set up for just you you know once you get them broken in it's uh i had no clue so i was just stoked so i bought them i had no business buying them at the time either but um i was i had just gotten divorced and i was like man i've been wanting these for years i'm gonna buy them i don't even care it was one of those like it was this is for me moments (laughs) oh yeah absolutely it was my it was my divorce gift to myself (laughs) yeah (laughs) so so yeah that's that's the story of my of my uh my callum um fred morrison pipe so i still have them still play them a lot and, and uh yeah they've they've been a blast hey and you're you're a solid player i don't ask you this in any way to to disparage your playing but i do i do wonder like do you ever like look at this set of pipes and just remember seeing fred morrison play them and be like i know you're capable of so much more pipes please oh stick gosh. with me don't don't give up on me yet pipes <laughs> it's <laughs> I, it's it's definitely a conversation i'm going to start having more often with them yeah because uh, <laughs> man i it's like in my mind, I, I feel like I always have so far to go between where I'm at and where I'd like to be with my playing. Yeah. And yeah, no matter who's playing what, you know, what pipes or whatever, I, I feel like it's just, there, there's always room for improvement. And it's always just like, man, I wish I could just play like Alan Tolley. I wish I could play like Fred Morrison. I wish I could oh, play yeah. like, you know, fill in the blank. It's like, oh right. man, there's so many things that I just, uh, you know, would love to be able to replicate one day. Yeah, I, 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 I suspect that it's similar with pretty much any interest that like there's an infinite depth to which you could go. You know, like there, you never actually master a thing. But I do, I, I don't know. So maybe just because we're in this, it does seem to me like, like piping is particularly that way. Like you think you've mastered it when you get the common marches down, but then it's like, oh, but now I can learn about like the nuances of like cane drone reads. And then it's like this whole other world of like small oh, pipes. And then like the question of like density of wood and, and just like there's, there is no end to like the little things you can change about your finger work and about your, your breath work and about the instrument itself. It's just, uh, it's infinitely complex and interesting. And if you can love the journey, that's wonderful. Oh yeah. But if you have yeah. any expectation that you're going to like master it at some point, you're, probably going to live disappointed your entire life <laughs> so true so true more important just to to have fun with it yeah and, and what about your highland pipes have you changed sets since you first got your first set or have you uh, kept the same set no so it's it's the original set i've had I've, obviously i've swapped out reeds and bags and that kind of stuff but um the sticks and stocks are the same they're mcclellan's um and i and you know going back to you know before when you asked about the class, you know, was it Utah pipe band at that time and everything like I remember putting in my order for my pipes um, and Roddy McClellan, you know, at, at the time, once again, he had a website just like, you know, anybody had a website at that time and there just wasn't a whole lot of information there, yeah. especially for somebody that was brand new to, to bagpiping. I didn't really know what mounts and ferrules and combing and beading and all these kind of things were, you know, so yeah. um, I said, I think these two w- these these woods look kind of cool and I yeah, kind of have this kind of budget and I called him up and placed the order and he said okay so what band are you playing with and I told him Utah Pipe Band and I remember that did like distinctly um, for some reason hmm. uh, but by the time I got the pipes uh, Utah Pipe Band or you know they're they still Utah Pipe Band but all of a sudden the guys that I had been playing with uh, were now playing in a different band called Wasatch and District and I had no idea what actually happened I thought they just changed their name um because it was mostly the same people so i I just kind of stuck with the same people that i'd started with ever since yeah which i i'd imagine like i've talked with a few people before about how like i don't know if it's unique to our geographical area but it does seem like there's there's a kind of tribalism that happens between pipe bands which uh, is unfortunate and i also think that it i feel like maybe i'm just differently aware of it now but i feel like it was worse a few years ago you know like oh i'm by which i mean like 15 20 years ago right right i i i think you're right about that and i i agree with that as well i mean tribalism is going to (laughs) happen to an extent you know competition day right it's like yeah go ahead you know be fierce and and fight for your team absolutely absolutely uh but at the same time i feel like and and i've i I think i am coming from a similar type view as you james like where you know several years ago maybe it was a different way but it just seems like the camaraderie in the Utah piping and drumming scene has grown, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it seems like there's a lot of, uh, you know, like mingling and, and friendships being built across 
different bounds, you know, between different bounds and such, which is really cool. Yeah. Oh, I agree. That's, that's a beautiful vision. I would, I would love for that to be more and more the case all the time. Yeah. And I, and I, I wonder, you know, and I don't feel like you have to comment on it if it makes you, you know, puts you in any sort of awkward spot. But I, I know that like when we started Garden Valley Pipe Band, there, there has been some sort of, some sometimes unspoken awkwardness because White Peak's Centennial Pipe Band already existed. And a lot of players from White Peak Centennial Pipe Band started playing with Garden Valley Pipe Band. And, uh, you know, like I even called the pipe, the pipe major there, Don, Don Smith, a couple times on the phone just to basically apologize and just be like, this is kind of awkward, you know, like we don't want to be setting up a rivalry here or any sort of animosity, you know, it's just, mm. just another pipe band, more geographically convenient, you know, st- stuff like that. And I'd imagine that maybe that, that split that kind of happens, like from Utah pipe band to Wasatch and district, like maybe it, it simply takes 10 or 15 years for any hurt feelings to heal and for things to get more comfortable. Maybe that's just, maybe that just goes with it. You just have to deal with it. I don't know. Yeah, it could, it could be. Um, I mean, time, time definitely does, uh, does quite a bit to change the way you view things anyways. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the situation. Um, but also you, you have so many new people coming in on both sides to where none of them care. Yeah. Right. They weren't there 15 years <laughs> like, ago when this split happened, I don't, right? It's, it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well that's unfortunate, but let's play music. You know, yeah, I, yeah. You know who, <laughs> that infusion of new blood makes it so that the old, the old, uh, any, any old like, uh, grudges and stuff start to become watered down and, and eventually disappear. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So have you, have you made it back to Scotland at any capacity since that, that trip when you were a kid? Um, yeah, I traveled there. Uh, I traveled there once. Um, my, so my family was going on a vacation to Ireland and, I went over early um, to Scotland just to kick, just to kick around for a couple of days, and then you know, flew over and met them in Ireland for their vacation. Mm. So um, that's but that's been that's been the only time we were planning actually to go in 2020. Yeah. Uh, you know, my wife and I, anyways, because my my yeah. sister and her husband are stationed in Germany. He's he's in the army. Oh, gotcha. Um, so we were going to go visit them, and I was like, man, flights from munich to edinburgh are like 86 dollars oh yeah you'd so be, you'd be losing money if you didn't take that yeah up. yeah so i was like oh man and i built it up too i was telling i was telling my wife everything you're sure you're gonna love this and that and getting my sister and her husband in on it and then you know they closed the borders and all sorts of yeah. stuff so that didn't happen rough year for travel well hopefully hopefully again in future and oh yeah not, not yeah, too yeah. distant future uh, now I know that you, so you've been playing with Utah Pipe Band and then Wasatch and District Pipe Band. You're you're also a soloist. I um I don't mean this in any way to be disparaging to any other uh great. Well, well, what I mean is I don't mean this to make me sound pompous because it's not as if you're the only thing that was standing in my way. But <laughs> I was kind of excited for you, but also for me when you moved from grade three soloing to grade two. Just because I kind of thought, oh, maybe now I have a chance to place, you know. <laughs> like, oh, fact, man. The first time that I placed in a grade three competition, if I'm not mistaken, was the very year that you started soloing in grade two. And I do think there was a direct correlation. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I doubt it. Here's, here's why. You're... <sighs> In soloing, especially, well, it, it, it's the same in bands. You know, you can look at any level, and even if you expect to do very well at a at a you know on a certain day, you still have the possibility of scratching. Like there, I I kick myself so many times over some competitions where I showed up thinking like, okay, I've got this. I've been practicing it flawlessly, you know, or flawlessly to to the level that I felt like I needed to perform yeah, like grade three flawless, whatever it was. Yeah. 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 And get up to get up to the competition, warm up, tune up, sounding great. And as soon as I start into the tune, lose it, yeah. you know, lose exactly. And it's just like, Oh crap. And your, your F sounds like an E or your drones are way out or something. Yeah, crazy or, is happening. or just play the completely play the wrong tune, <laughs> wrong tune and yeah. just stop and look at the judge. And they're looking at me because they know exactly what happened. And yeah, <laughs> It's like, well, I can still play my tunes for you. They're like, yeah, you can. <laughs> but there goes, you know. It, it, but that's the way. That's the way it is, you know. I, um, I, so, although I, I kind of a, a appreciate that kind of like 
comment because I definitely have those kind of people, um, you know, in my own grade level now where it's like, okay, I don't want to go against right. this guy or that oh, guy. Oh, is that or guy this playing girl right that after girl. me? Dang, man. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, crap. I don't want to go go out to this California games because this guy's going to be there. Right. Or not because I don't like him, but it's because like I want to feel like I did better than I yeah. you know, may have. Yeah. Um, but there's there's just so many there are so many variable things that could go on that yeah you just show up and do your best and for all you know you could come out on top or better than you better than you planned on yeah, but, yeah, yeah it's just it, about fun anyways you know fun that's and progression right. that's right it's all about fun setting those personal records and stuff like that and it's 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 not in any way like suggesting that someone's skill isn't valuable or the hard work they put into it but they're oh, like no. along with skill and hard work there is also a lot of variables like luck you know whether the the judges a preference for different tune choices all kinds of stuff can factor into it no oh, yeah your own mindset for the day and what have you yeah but man i i like i've i've got great respect for anybody that steps into solos for whatever reason um yeah just at any level at any level holy smokes because it's it's something else it's always fun it's always fun to play with a band and there's plenty of stress and and you know uh everything else that goes along with competition in the band level but when it's only you I don't care who you are. Like that's a, that, that's, that says something is step in and, and just give it what you got and see how, see how you stack up. Yeah. Yeah. I've often, I've often thought that like bagpipes musically are like the most naked instrument in the world just because, and again, this is coming from, of course, my, my niche perspective that this is the, you know, the sphere that we occupy, but it's, it's, it's so loud. You've got to have multiple things in tune with each other. <laughs> you know, it's just like, if you're playing bagpipes by yourself, there is no, there's no covering up or hiding any mistakes that you make, you know, whether those are mistakes in tuning when you're getting ready or mistakes in, in execution when you're playing. Oh yeah. So when you step, you're willing to step in front of somebody who knows what they're talking about and they're there to judge you. And you're like, here I am, I'm going to do this. You know, that's, it can, uh, it takes a lot of, a lot of personal work to a lot of bravery really to be willing to do it. And that's not meant to be a pat on my own back, uh, you know, but just like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't no, want it's... anybody to think, oh, I'm not good enough to solo yet. Like, no, if you're if you're brave enough to do it, you should do it and you get respect just for doing it. Oh, absolutely. Plus, I mean, the interaction and stuff you get with the judges and um, once again, that camaraderie that you get with instead of like bumping the guy next to you in the circle and be like, hey, that was a heck of a run. Then it's, uh, you know, talking to other people in your competition pool and yeah. like, yeah. oh, man, you sounded really good today or or whatever the case is, you know, it's just, you're all mingling, kind of watching each other and, and going to the results together. And, um, you know, it's, and most of the time you're not associated with the other person at all, aside from being in the same competition pool. Yeah. It's kind of like you're competing against each other, but you're more like in this together, right? It's oh yeah. More, it's more a community than a, than a competitive kind of thing, really. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And as, and as cool as it might feel to, um, you know, place in a certain way or whatever it's it, like you said it is that camaraderie like everybody knows the nerves that come along with it and uh, especially when you're playing in front of say like i don't know like richard parks or mm -hmm. jack lee or somebody like that and yeah. it's, it's just you and them and you know they know <laughs> yeah <they're, laughs> they know better than you know what you just messed up <laughs> you might they might notice things that you messed up that you don't even know you messed up oh yeah yeah um, did you, when you went up back over to Scotland, did you take your pipes with you? Did you bust your pipes out? No, I didn't actually. Just cause. Hey, uh, next time, next, next time Wasatch I know. goes to the worlds, right? Then, then you'll. Right. Really <laughs> I know it's, I, I just get so nervous, like traveling outside of the country with them. Um, just, just because of the whole different woods things yeah, and all that true. kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. So, um, you imagine that like you get them out at, at the humid sea level coast or something and they'll just like explode in your hands. Yeah. Or even I'm just afraid of them getting confiscated or, or right, something because they're right. like, oh, the these definitely look like they're an endangered species. Right. So. And I just happened to not get my paper. I don't know. You know, it's just, maybe it's just overthinking it because people travel with them all the time. But I just never, never have outside of the country. I've traveled with my small pipes quite a bit in the country, just when I have to travel for work or something. And I'll take my small pipes so I can play them in the hotel room and stuff. And they, they always get searched every single time oh serious <laughs> yeah they always have the little tag inside that they were you know that they were withheld and searched and in fact i even when when zach and kevin and i were working on trying to figure out how to 3d print small pipes i bought some plans from a from a pipe maker who was no longer doing business uh called named simon hope 
over uh-huh. in uh, Scotland. And so he would sell these, you know, these profiles so you could turn your own pipes. And we just wanted to buy them so we would have dimensions to put into into CAD to to you know to print them. All right. And so w- the way he sold them though is he'd print them off on big, you know, true to scale um, sheets of paper and laminate them and mail them to you. And uh, the first time he tried to mail them to me, they got they got flagged as uh, a potentially dangerous, like as if they were the plans to make a pipe bomb or something. And oh my they, gosh! They didn't make it out of the country, and so he had to resend them <laughs> with like a declaration on them. <laughs> I could see that happening. Yeah, I could totally like, see that happening. The hey, I just don't travel well. I I just remembered something I needed to ask you about while oh, we're yeah, on what's this. Up? What's up? So, um, well, a, a couple things like I, I, cause I, I see the stuff that you post on social media, you know, either w- whether it's on your personal profile or, um, the heritage piping and, and that kind of stuff. You're, but, you're making me blush. You know, you know, my bagpiping, uh, uh, name, the heritage bagpiping thing. Oh I, man. No, sure. that's, I, I love the stuff you put out. I think it's cool that you, that you like make the videos and, um, you know, get everything out there. It's just, uh, it, it's something that we're in my mind. It's like, man, that would be really cool to, to do. But, um, for example, like, uh, Tim Cummings, like oh, I, yeah. I had no idea that you had been in communication with him and had like such a love for his, his music and that kind of stuff. Like, um, when you, I, I think you just posted a tune and said, Hey, this is by, you know, this was composed or, or arranged by Tim Cummings. And I was like, no way. Oh, I'm so, sure I did. Cause his is the music I play. Basically. He's like my, he's like my bagpipe spirit guide. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah. So, I, and I don't even really know him that, uh, I, I mean, I've never met him. I've talked to him on the phone once because I, 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 uh, had a book that I ordered from him that seemed to have got lost in the mail. Oh really? But, so you, uh, you'd found his stuff too, huh? But that was it. Like the Appalachian music collection yeah, yeah. is like oh, is the one. That's so great, man. So I ordered that book from him because uh, I I saw one of his videos on YouTube and I was like, oh man, it was the Man of Constant Sorrow. Yes. Oh. And yeah, one of my favorites, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and I was just like, oh, because I, I loved that tune and I'd heard it on Oh Brother Where Art Thou in like yep, guitar yep. form, you know. And uh, when I saw him playing it on the pipes, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to, I've got to like get my hands on some of that music yeah, whether it's that or just is. more yeah. of that that style you know yeah so tracked him down tracked down the music tracked down his website and at that point the book wasn't being produced mm, gotcha. and so i was just like scouring ebay and anything else to try to find this stuff anyways yeah. it was finally back in print and then a- around the same kind of time i saw you posting videos about his music and i was like no way like yeah. <laughs> you know tim cummings like you know the music so i was like super psyched about it and then uh, even above and beyond that this one's even th- this one's off in the weeds but um your throat singing yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I always like so I once again just going down the rabbit hole on YouTube of different musicians and stuff I came across that somehow and I was like oh that's that's a pretty cool thing yeah and in fact I was like that would probably be a cool thing to learn to do while you're piping yeah like man. that'd be a cool accompaniment type it's another thing drone so, heck yeah yeah so never ever tried it but when I saw you like post that video of it was like you've got to be joking so it just Bro, seemed like like person what's going yeah on? it's like we had these this a couple like convergences of a, a couple interests that yeah. were i mean one of them's piping specific of course but one of them was like off in the weeds a bit but well that's how i was i was pleasantly surprised to find you in the in the donald Lindsay 3d printed in the in the Lindsay system chanter circles as well it's like oh, oh yeah this. another guy interested in that that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty cool. Maybe we'll we have need to get, to hang get out, together. Bro. And I know, I, I know, it's too bad we're ways a ways away. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it'd be cool to get together and and jam some things out sometimes. Heck yeah, get some more, especially some small pipe and stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so when you're when you're playing small pipes or big pipes or practice channel or whatever it is, who usually gets to listen to you? Um, or has to you, listen to you. <laughs> yeah, has, yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Uh, you know, I, most of the time, I, in the in the past several months, I definitely haven't played my Highland pipes as much as I've needed to. Oh, um, that's probably most of us. Yeah, it's it's just been, yeah. Uh, so my small pipes and my practice channer and stuff, I break out often and it's always my wife and my new little girl that get to listen to it um i'm determined to make her a, a piper yeah well, how, how, well, how is she is she uh does she cry when you break them out or does it seem to be going well so far no she loves music That's so good. yeah so whether it's the small pipes or 
just playing something on, you know, on the computer or whatever. Um, she loves music. So I have high hopes. And, and does your wife put up with it or was she like, like when you first met, was she like really psyched that you were a piper? Well, she, she didn't really know enough about piping and really what that entailed. I think it was just like, Oh yeah, that's kind of a quirky, cool hobby. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it really hit her as far as like how involved it can be until she showed up to the first Highland games here in Utah. Yeah. Uh, you know, her first Highland games here and, uh, was, you know, here were the Utah games and she was just like, Oh my gosh, like this is, this there is a, a lot pretty, of people here. Do other people yeah, like, do this? <laughs> this is a pretty big deal to you, isn't it? I was like, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. Are you, did you have to start going through like the the slow realization that I think many Piper's spouses go through to realize like, oh, they're going to spend a lot of time on this. Oh, they're going to spend a lot of money on this. Oh, I have to come with them to these events. <laughs> I know. And, and she she really is such a good sport. I think she likes the, the music most of the time. She always makes fun of me like playing P. Brooks or like singing P. Brooks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, uh, which is fine, obviously, but, uh, I, I think overall she enjoys it. And I, I, I'm just lucky to have such a supportive, uh, person in my life, you know, around it. So whether she wants to go to the games or just comes because I'm there, I, either way, it's fun. Yeah. So now you mentioned you sing P. Brook. Do you, have you been learning the, you know, the, the secret language? The, uh, I've tried, but. I'm a little too self-conscious about it is the problem because You're I... Are going to give me a live rendering of uh, oh, Lord Lovett's Lament or something no. right now? <laughs> oh, heck no. The, the, especially because I, I, know, I know I'd slaughter it because I've spoken English my whole life in Utah and had, <laughs> have no real um, Maybe that exposure exotic, to Gaelic. Right? Maybe you'd be yeah. <laughs> an, an exotic uh, uh, accent on the Gaelic. Huh? It's, it, for some reason, I, I feel like it wouldn't have the same effect as somebody with a British accent yeah. here in America. It might you know, not it's, be exotic at all. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's usually just more like my own made up noises and yeah. singing to notes instead of what the actual um, you know, sounds are you're supposed to make for a yeah. truck or whatever. Yeah, well, that's cool that you do it though. What, do you find that singing tunes, be it Peabrook or other kinds of tunes, is helpful when learning them? Um, I think it can be to an extent. Uh, I've found myself several times where I'll hear a tune, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be listening to stuff on Spotify and get this tune stuck in my head, and I'll just get away singing with it. And uh, when I finally get my hands on the music, it's like, oh man, that's not how it goes at all. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. yeah. But no, I, I I I absolutely feel like if you can if you can get to the point where you're singing the tune correctly in your mind, like playing it can fall in line so much easier. Yeah. Do you have any piping tunes that like are a real standby for you? You know, whether it's a common march or you know anything like you know, I'm thinking like, of course we all have our aspirational list of tunes we want to learn. You know, the hard drive and all those others. Um, right. Right. And the high drive, of course, both drives. Um, but are there any tunes uh, that like you, you've been playing ever since you started and they are evergreen? You know, you just you've never not loved those tunes. Oh, man, that's tough. Because some of us, we do get tired of some tunes sometimes. Right. You know, like eventually it's like, I don't want to play Scott on the Brave again. Right. You know, <laughs> but, but I, you know, maybe some of them stay beautiful no matter how long you play them. You know, I can't say that I've got some that are just like, oh, man, I like I love playing that tune i think i think one that i find myself almost unconsciously going to often especially when i'm tuning up is flowers of the forest mm. um one and and you know getting into bagpipe music i didn't realize that that had you know been associated with people that had passed on and and you know uh, what have you i just thought it was a pretty song so yeah, yeah. um i always loved playing it and uh yeah, I still I still like playing it just because it's a nice kind of melancholy tune and uh, got a good it, – it's got a lot of things that you can have some fun with embellishments and different ways to express it on your own. And uh, just – it's a fun one to tune up. I mean, I say a fun one to tune up to. It's it's an easy one to tune up to to make sure your drones are matching your chanter and, and yeah, those kind covers, of things. Yeah, so. it covers the range and gives you some nice, nice long-held notes so you can kind of get the feel of where you're at, huh? Yeah, so uh, depending on my mood, that's that's one that I I, I like uh, just kind of I, I don't even know what to call like uh, 
kind of improving with a little bit uh, yeah. when I'm when I'm warming up or something like that. Gotcha. Do you um? You mentioned that you know when you you might you'd be listening to some some music and kind of start singing it and then get the, get a hold of the music. Do you have any favorite? Uh, obviously, Fred Morrison. Aside from Fred Morrison, any other favorite pipers or bagpipe bands uh, that you like listening to? Yeah. Oh man. So I love St. Lawrence or O'Toole. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, and stuff. Whether it was when uh, Terry was the pipe major, or now when Alan is the pipe major, like holy smokes, I love so many things that they've that they've done. Um, and I and I think a lot of it goes back to you know where they they take these classic pipe tunes and then put their own spin on them. Yeah. Um, but you can still hear that tune just shine through, and yeah, it's, I, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, because. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you get to the point where you're like, man, I can't hear that tune anymore, or I can't play that tune one more time. Like it's just so blah. Yeah. But then you hear that that tune that used to be blah, and it's got these new new. Yeah, it's put into a new time signature, and it's got these new little runs up and down on it, or whatever the case is. And now it's like, oh man, I love that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I would say Saint Lawrence Old School is, they they've been one that I, I've fallen back on for several years now. I love listening to those guys. Um, as far as soloists, uh, I re- so there, there are a couple that I can think of. Um, funny enough, one of them is Alistair Lee. Like, I don't know how widely known he is yet. Um, I'm looking him up right now. But uh, Does, did he know, did he play with the Red Hot Chili Pipers? Uh, I don't know a, honestly. Maybe that was yeah, was, Alistair. I don't know enough about his history um, to be to be honest. But um, I heard him solo at Winter Storm. You know, uh, the times that I was out there. Yeah. And I was just blown away. I was like, oh my gosh! Like he is, he is good. Like there's just something about. Of course, he executes well and tunes up well, but um, I think part of it too is just his stage presence, if you could call it that, in, mm-hmm. in solo piping. Um, man, he was just he was just a blast to listen to. So even if you can find some of his solo stuff on YouTube, um, yeah, I just googled uh, him. He's, some some stuff from uh, Winter Storm and otherwise popped up. So he's yeah, he's on there. Yeah. So um, once again, not really somebody that that you could probably find on spotify or whatnot but just some of those clips that people will put up on youtube um another one that i like and well if you're, know, if you're gonna say me it's okay you can you can say it <laughs> I, you love hanging around those grade three solo competitions to just for when when old old james steps up no no for real like i like <laughs> I seriously love listening to solo competitions, um, solo or band competitions in almost any level. Um, but uh, now I, I have a hard time, like really just naming any particular person. Like the problem is I, I, I know I can recognize a lot of people, um, but don't know them all by name. Oh, no sweat, man. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I have embarrassed myself many times. Not just in this podcast, also just in casual conversation. That like, there's a there is a, a there are floating um, sets, uh, performances, faces, tartans, etc. In one oh, half yeah, of yeah. my brain, then on the other half of my brain, there is this floating cloud of different names of players, makers, and pipe bands. I'm not always quite clear of how they match up. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, that was SFU, or maybe. Uh, Victoria Police, or maybe Vale of Athol, or maybe Bog Hall, or maybe <laughs> like it's like oh, okay, actually, I don't actually know anything about anything. Is often how I feel, but <laughs> yeah, oh no, I and I I totally get that. And part of the problem is too, like I'll I'll get on YouTube, for example. Uh, that's like that's my go-to to find new music and new performers for me. Yeah, like I'll I'll type in say you know, Peabrook or Cantrick or something like that, and then just let it autoplay from there and um, just have it go in the background while I'm doing work or something. And when something hits me, it's like, oh man, who is that? And I'll look it up and it's like, I have no clue who this person is. Yeah, so often even... it's so so obscure, right? It's like, well... yeah, which is awesome. I, I love when that happens. Um, 
but uh yeah so i i don't have a ton of just like go-to people like i have a bunch of go-to songs by lots of different people yeah, so like sure, sure. lincoln hilton's got some really cool stuff but that i guy. don't I'm just, yeah i'm just I, all constantly boiling with jealous rage when i think of lincoln hilton goodness have you looked at some of the music he's composed like it's the sheet amazing. music like it's how do you amazing. even get your fingers to do that stuff I know. um but yeah so so i don't love all of his stuff but there are a lot of things where it's like man i really like that um yeah, let me be clear jealous rage because i admire him so much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know of course well and i i was i was lucky enough to be on a uh on a group um like teaching lesson like with him not i wasn't teaching i was like he was teaching the the group of us oh yeah um just online and man he is just dang cool like just really that's, down to I earth think that like that's what it comes down to i think that that's he is an amazing bagpiper he's got a really cool personality he's very handsome he, <laughs> he it's like well how come he gets he's... this fully stacked deck you know like <laughs> Lincoln, you can have two of these three things, but you can't have them all. Ah, he he's, has them all. Dang, damn it. He's got it going on. Yeah, which yep. is awesome. Run with it, man. Um, there's another guy. So I, I just pulled up my uh, YouTube history here so I could tell you. There's another guy. This one might be a little obscure, but he's got a really cool um, set that I've listened to. Man, I don't even know how many hundreds of times probably. But his name is uh, Griffin Hall. And um, he's got a set that he's he's got up on YouTube um, with with some small pipes that is oh, yeah. just awesome. One of those oh, guys yeah, again, I where it's seen like some of this guy's stuff before. Yeah, and I, I couldn't even tell you what else he plays, but I love that set. Actually, um, I think that I think I just barely came aware of him this Christmas, you know, because like you know, some sort of algorithm brought up one of, like a Christmas set that he had done on small pipes. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then there's another guy that. I've come across just recently on Facebook um, over in Scotland, uh, Kyle Howie. Um, he's He's got a couple of his own compositions that are pretty fun. Um, and then also has a couple arrangements, uh, you know, similar to, you know, what I was saying I loved about what St. Lawrence Old Tool, Tool does. He's done this for a couple tunes as well, where he'll take some old, very well-known marches and turn it into a reel or a jig and make it his own thing and it's just a blast but mm -hmm. he's he's got a lot of stuff he does um like a lot of the stuff he does on on facebook is all with his blair chanter or mm. I, I guess he teaches like whistle lessons as well but um, oh, I see. you can find him under kyle howie piper yeah 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 so he's he's got some really cool stuff too mm. Once again, never met the guy. Don't really know much about him, but one of those I just happened to come across was like, man, I really like this and that that he's done. You know? Yeah. How about yourself? Who are who are your go tos? Oh well, it sounds like a lot of the same people. You know, I, I idolize Fred Morrison and Timothy Cummings, and and uh, you know, of course, the SFU and uh, and Victoria Police and uh, Simon Fraser. Um, I do I do really like. I know that sometimes this gets poo pooed on in our competitive piping community, but. I love it when groups use bagpipes with like other genres. Um, oh yeah. There's a band called Wookie foot that my friend Kevin introduced me to that. They've got a cool fusion thing going on anyway. It's like bluegrass and hip hop and bagpipes. And it's what, uh, and aside from that, I'll be, I, I'll be honest with you, Tyler. I'm, I get a little wishy washy, hippy dippy when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I love, I, I, I get really into the poetry of their lyrics as well. Like it, it informs ah. my worldview in some ways as well. But if you want to check them out, I would start with a track called Only Visiting. Or maybe Only it's visiting. Just Visiting. Um, Man, I just looked them up on Google while, while you told me about them. And yeah, they're uh, they're not somebody I'd, I'd expect to have uh, bagpipes associated yeah. with them. Yeah, and, Only and, Visiting. Yeah, or, or actually right. it's, it's Just Visiting. Just oh, Just Visiting, visiting. Yeah. Just Visiting. All right. But they've got a bunch of other tunes with, with pipes in them. And, and you know, like... Honestly, like there's a group called like Celtic Pink Floyd or Celtic Floyd or something like that. Uh -huh. And I know that like the music is a little bit cheesy and campy sometimes, but I like stuff like that. I get excited by stuff like that. I do like that. Um, and honestly, I don't mind the Unipiper or the Sandpiper or the Snake Charmer or what, any of these other ones. Like I don't necessarily seek them out to listen to them, but I think it's I, I think it's fun to see the different ways people do stuff. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I... <laughs> If I had a better skill set with this, or maybe it's just a um, a lack of practice, like I wish more than anything that I could easily transpose, you know, other 
songs that I like onto a bagpipe scale. Mm, yeah, totally. Um, and isn't oh, that that's part of the promise of the of the or the at least the the allure of the Lindsay system chanter, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That hasn't worked out yet, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, we're in the struggle together, man. Don't give up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so no, I'm I'm in the same I'm in the same boat with you there. Although it's it's like, man, if if you were to, you know, tell this guy to execute, you know, this song a certain you know, like the Unipiper guy, like if you were to try to pick apart his playing, I mean, of course you could, but that's yeah, not you can't really think the about point. it too hard. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. That's not the point. The point is just just have fun. Let it be what it is. Just take it very lightly. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and actually, that's so. That's that's something that. Fred Morrison talked about a lot in his like small piping class that I was in. He's like, here's the thing with small pipes. And I don't know if this is just his own personal view or if this is just kind of like, yeah, this is how small pipes are. Um, but he's like, yeah, it's, it's not so rigid. He's like, you, you play the embellishments as you fill them. You, yeah, it, it's just a lot more open to mm-hmm. interpretation or at least in, in his philosophy of small piping uh, that he expressed in that class. And I was like, Oh, that's actually very cool. You know? Cause yeah. so you, thing and setting in the solo setting where it's like you play it this period yeah. period yeah. um but, but I, I love i think we'll kind of uh, outside of that and apply it to like, different genres like you said or you just express express it way then way then the right way the right way yeah absolutely. absolutely not to say that it's not to say that it's bad to uh, the pipe band setting of course is also amazing this and that japs and that commitment to having every single embell exactly the six that's what made music amazing but that doesn't have to be that kind of this doesn't have to transfer to small piping, ill and piping, other kinds of piping too. Like it's okay to have sort of these kind of like like you know you take you take the guitar, and it's like there are a lot of different genres in which you could apply the like you know, one way is wrong, it's just different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now, so man, now now if it were no object, would what would be your 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 first purchase, whether or travel experience, like education or an instrument within the piping? Or what would be your first thing if there's you know blank blank check? You can use it however you want. Oh man, to to piping and experience that way. You mean? Yeah, related related piping in some way. Oh man, that's tough. Because you have a whole list, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's, I've got a whole room in the back of my mind full of like, man, one day. Yeah. Um, oh. Don't feel any pressure. If, if, you, need, if you need a minute to think about it, I can cut out the pause too. So there's so many. <laughs> there's so many things. Yeah. Um, now you're but, trying to rank them, right? Like which one is? I that? know, I know. Okay, okay. What would what would be first? Um, however, I think it would be very cool to um, actually go to the National Piping Center in Scotland and like stay there and do one of their you know, rounds of instruction on yeah, whatever. I mean, they have all sorts of, yeah, whatever, whatever they doing. have all sorts of courses that go on throughout the year. And I think it would just be cool to go there and do that, you know, yeah. uh, whatever the course is. In fact, they've got a small piping one that I would love to do mm. that. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I don't know if it's Malin or Malin Lewis. Um, anyways, the teach, they cl- uh, class they teach on small piping that I think mm. would be a blast. Um, that, yeah, investing in like traveling somewhere and doing instruction or like the Kerchus stuff that uh, Timothy Cummings is involved in over on the East Coast. I think it's like mainly That's small the Vermont piping. piping school, right? Yeah, I believe so. Like yeah. I would love to go to something like that. Did you know that they're doing some gatherings online now because of COVID? I, I, I feel like I got an email about it, but I can't, you know, just recently, but... Uh... Dude, I don't, let I don't me let me details. recommend checking it out. I joined them for one of well, I've joined them for two actually now, just in the last few months, and they've been a blast. And uh, really, Timothy himself is there to teach, and uh, as well as other excellent instructors. Oh man, yeah, I've absolutely got to look into it further. Then, um, I think that would be the big thing. I, I feel like anytime I can stretch outside of, you know, my current circle of whether it's my personal knowledge or uh, like other pipers that I'm with. Uh, anytime I can kind of stretch myself outside of that to different styles of playing or different levels of playing, I think it's, uh, it, you can't lose. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's kind of like, it's, it's such a small world. Like any, any, anything that offers you an expansion of that vision is very exhilarating. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, I think that would be the main place I'd want to put money from a blank check is, is traveling to 
these education, you know, educational experiences and, yeah. and uh, just spending the time there and, and, you know, uh, just getting to know other, other people in, in the world that are involved in, in the similar type thing. Yeah. Uh, and of course, increasing the skill set. Uh, I mean, plenty of things that I'd like to buy, but I mean, increasing the skill set is, uh, in my mind, it's something that I'd value more. Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. If what, um, by the way, I, we're, I've, I've kept you for an hour. Are you okay to talk a little bit more or do you need to, should we wrap it up? No, I'm, I'm good to keep talking. That's, uh, my wife is working today. She works the weekends oh, and, gotcha. uh, so it's just me and the baby girl here, but she is sleeping right now. So I'm nice. a free man. Well then let me ask you some more questions. What, uh, other than bagpiping and bagpipe stuff, what else takes up your time, energy, and focus in this world? Oh man. Um, a lot of it is work. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, work and, and trying to create something of my own, um, like as far as a business goes. Yeah. Let me so, see. I've, I, I feel like I was aware of you working in vehicle sales for a while. Yeah. I sold cars for a long time and, uh, I've, I've been in sales most of my adult life and really love a lot of things about it. I remember seeing that you'd like, you'd like transport motorcycles back and forth and like the best way to transport them was to drive them or something like that. Like you just, yeah, you know, well, going I, for rides. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's always the case, but for whatever reason, cause I, I worked at a car dealership um, and every once in a while, somebody will come in and you don't, you don't, they don't have money to put down or they don't have a car to trade in, but Hey, I've got this motorcycle. Will you guys take a motorcycle? And you know, and every time most, you were like, yes, we will. <laughs> I know. Like most people at a car dealership have no clue about motorcycles. It's just not what they, you know, know. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, well, I mean, the, the Kelly blue book value says it's worth this. So we'll give you that, you know? Um, and that's kind of as far as it would go. But, um, the group that I, that I worked for, they had a dealership up in cash Valley and, somebody's customer. It wasn't even my customer. One of my coworkers had somebody that was like really interested in buying this motorcycle that happened to be up in cash Valley. Um, so sometimes depending on the dealership group, they can go to other dealership like Larry H Miller, for example, they can go to the one in Provo and, and grab the used car that's from the dealership up in Ogden or you right. know, sometimes like shared inventory. Yeah. Sometimes they'll collaborate that way. Um, so, they called up the dealership in Logan and they're like, yeah, man, we're never going to sell this motorcycle up here. Come grab it. So nobody knew how to ride a motorcycle that was willing to go up there except yeah. for me. So I was like, oh, dang it. I'll, I'll ride a motorcycle back. Sure. So, yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> and just posted the picture of it. So yeah, yeah so that wasn't uh, your everyday life. Unfortunately. No, no, <laughs> no. Most of it was out being, being that guy on the, uh, at the car dealership chasing people down that drove in and yeah. Hey, hey, wait, hey, what brings you in? You know, right. <laughs> so. well, hey, and don't, don't feel like you have to, you know, if you got stuff in the works and you don't feel like talking about it yet, but if you got anything to plug, feel free to do so. What kind of thing are you trying to build for yourself right now? Yeah. So right now, um, I'm, I'm building a marketing, um, a marketing business. It's actually called review alchemy. Hmm. Um, basically I, it, it's the goal of it is, is to help small businesses, um, dominate their local like searches. So for example, if you're looking for somebody in Payson that sells insurance, um, you know, you'd likely go on Google and say, you know, home insurance pays in Utah or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, my goal is to help whoever's in the insurance industry or whatever industry in that town, you know, be the ones that show up in the top results. Mm. Um, so I, I'm putting together like a website and a program there to, help boost help boost that so so that would be so you'd be doing like con consulting for search engine optimization and would you be yeah. designing websites and logos and stuff too or is that less no i've got somebody i can outsource that to but sure. it's not really what i it's it's not something i know enough about mm. um and not something i really lean on at this point but if somebody needed it i could absolutely get them in the right hands gotcha so that's a big thing. Otherwise, you know, sales consulting is, is always the thing. And outside of that, just, just selling, I do a lot of contract work for selling and then, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you feel like to any degree, like sales is, 
is a professional field that at least it seems to me like I've, I, I've dabbled in sales a little bit myself, but I was not good at it. I was always in trouble <laughs> at the end of every month. Um, but it seems to me that like it requires a unique kind of mental uh like rigor like like real it's it's kind of like you've got to be in top physical performance shape in your brain uh to be successful with sales do you feel like there's anything in your sort of professional skill set that has translated to your piping whether it's how you practice or how you approach a performance or anything like that oh yeah actually um because I, I, I definitely wouldn't say that I'm in like the top physical performance in my mind. Like you said, I, I do believe there's a lot of truth to that, but man, that is, that is like such a battle, you know, day in and day out. It's also um, an emotional challenge, right? I mean, like a salesman has to smile even when they're dead inside, you know, right. like whatever is happening, <laughs> you've got to put on the right face for your customer. It, it's true. And, and that's kind of what I would say translates over to the competition side, you know, the, the competition side of, of piping. Uh, cause for example, um, let's say you didn't sleep very well the night before, or you got food poisoning or you're sick or you're, uh, intimidated by the other people you're competing against or mm. in, intimidated by the judge you're playing for, or, or you just got some bad news about something that happened back home or something. Exactly. Or it's too stinking hot outside to play the bagpipes mm. or whatever the case is. Um, I, I think the part that I, that I could say translates best is just knowing like, Hey, you've just got to go through the process, just stick to what you know, stick to the basics and just follow the process as far as your warm up, your tuning, trying to get your best to get yourself in that headspace of, of playing that music, but just doing the things that you know how to do. Um, mm, yeah. and it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, but neither is anybody else you're playing against mm. and you just got to just got to do your best and, and uh, hopefully your best was enough to get you the result you're looking for. Um, and if not, you just keep practicing and, and trying to perfect it for next time, regardless of what the circum circumstances are. I see. That's that's interesting. I, I feel like the image that comes to my mind is that like sort of classic scene you see in a movie or a TV show where somebody's working in a call center, which I recognize that that is not all sales, of course. But right, when, like, right. they're not being successful and the advice is stick to the script, you know, just use that script. And uh, maybe to some degree that in piping, it's like, you know, of course you can go from there and, you know, go up into the higher echelons of, of sales as it were. But um, if nothing else, you can stick to the script. And what is the script? You know, I don't know, practicing regularly and yeah, focusing tuning, your, on, tuning your pipe, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Making sure you maintain your instrument, making sure you're tuning. Yeah. Like you said, tuning properly and then mm. do your best to execute. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what else? Uh, other, other hobbies and interests that, you know, you, you build in model planes or collecting <laughs> stamps? No, no, not at, uh, not currently. That's, you uh, have a baby. That's what you, that's your other hobby. I know right? I've got a baby and we're, we're getting into a new house here in the next month or so oh, um, if everything goes right. So, uh, that's, there, I've got plenty of other things occupying my mind right now, aside from work and work and piping yeah <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing really uh exciting to speak to but those those are the big things right now yeah do you have any family members or friends who like are such fans of your playing that like they'll actually request songs like they know the titles of tunes that you play and they'll say play you know play pumpkins fancy for me or you know, oh man like no i don't <laughs> <laughs> they uh, put up with you but maybe the, don't, don't go looking for it huh <laughs> yeah yeah it's I'm, I'm appreciative enough that they're supportive um, and it's okay that they don't request certain tunes or request certain things. I don't know if it's because they just would rather me, rather not egg me on or if they um, <laughs> Play just if don't you know must, the but tunes. No more or, than you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, I, I really try to like go out of my way to play in a place that's not going to disturb the same people over and over. So like yeah. I'll try to find a park or something and, or a, uh, you know, random parking lot where it's, somewhat secluded at least from direct neighbors and just play my heart out there because i'm not taking anybody off <laughs> yeah I, I wonder how many of us pipers and probably drummers as well maybe especially snare drummers have like not just one place that we go to practice but like a rotation of places so that we oh yeah don't even end up in the same park every time so we just try to try to spread it out a little bit Man, and it's such a mixed bag. I'm sure you've experienced it as well where let's say you'll you'll go to the same park a couple times and there 
there sometimes will be a couple people that's like, oh man, I love it when you come out here. Yeah. Um, most of the time you don't hear from anybody, but like when I play in my neighborhood, like there are a couple people that'll say, hey, we love, oh man, we love the bagpipes, love hearing that. And then a lot of other times it'll be like, wow, those are sure loud, aren't they? <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> like, as long yeah, as you've got are. nice neighbors, that's all the further it goes. But you know that there's, uh, there's, there are a few other words that are lurking in the background. When they I say know. That's like a... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're really thinking. And yes, they are loud. That's why I wear, wear earplugs. Yeah. Man, I uh, I recently refinished part of my uh, shed that's behind my house to be an office space, uh -huh. and um, and so like it's a brick shed, and I thought to myself, all right, now it's framed on the inside. I'm gonna put up insulation. I framed I framed in the ceiling and put insulation over the top of that as well, thinking to myself like you know temperature control of course, but also now I will have a place where I can practice my pipes at all hours, and I'm not gonna bother anybody. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was, you know, I had my earplugs in, of course, because like in that, it's a pretty small space. It's like 12 foot by nine foot. Um, I'm out here playing my pipes and uh, my wife texts me and she's like, do I hear bagpipes or is, am I going crazy? Like, is it just like phantom ringing in my oh, ears? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm inside my shed, like door shut and everything. The house is physically separated from the shed. You know, it's like a good, probably, probably 18 feet at the very closest point. She's through the walls of the house and everything and she's still hearing it man i'm still bugging my neighbors there's just no <laughs> there is no escape there's no way around it yeah. it's just how it is yeah. well do you have any kind of um pre-performance ritual anything that helps you get in that mental space or anything that's good for you to prep the night before like what's what's kind of your thing whether you're getting called up for a funeral or you're going to a band competition uh what would you do so in the last couple of years, I'd say the the big thing. Well, I'll I'll tell you what's changed because it used to be like, man, I would just try to listen to recordings of the tune I was about to play over and over and over, mm, and like yeah. either finger along to it on my you know, on my leg, you know, without a chanter or with my practice chanter and not play along with it, or you know, just try to hammer it in as hard as I could for the couple of days or a couple of hours leading up to the competition. Um, and I think it would just psych me out I, I, mm -hmm. like in a bad way. It would just stress me out too, too much. Yeah. Um, to where I wasn't really just focusing on like being there and hanging out with the band or being there and experiencing the games and everything that there is there instead of just worrying so much about just playing this right. Cause it's just not going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, really it's, I, I feel like in the last couple of years, it's just changed to like, okay, like I'm, I'll practice my guts out. Um, you know, leading up to it, I'll, you know, try to get my pipes out at least every other day, if not every day, um, during competition season and play through my stuff and just try to improve on the small things that I can or that I notice. But then when the competition comes, it's like, all right, I've, <laughs> I'm not going to get anything any better than it has been at this mm, point. Yeah. You've so done, you've done what you're going to do. So now just, yeah, like the, the work's been done, whether it's uh, all, uh, whether it's been enough or good enough, you know, what time will tell, but it's been done. So try really just try not to worry about it until the day of. And then it's like, all right, let's get some good sleep. Let's get some good food, make sure I'm hydrated and then get out there and try not to get too nervous. Yeah. Cause you got to <laughs> enjoy it, right? If you're not able to enjoy it, it's going to be hard to stick with it for very long. Yeah. It's like, there's, there's no, yeah. If you don't enjoy it, then what are you doing? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just trying to, just trying to not get too, I, I don't know if it's just nervous or worked up or whatever the case is, but I hate getting to the games and having that hurry up and wait. Hey, you're going on in two hours. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do for the next hour and 15 minutes or so, you know? Right. And when you're um, stressed, it's like, well, then I'll get my pipes out right now and start tuning because I only have two hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, so yeah, I would say that's, that's been the biggest thing for me is just try to take a step back and do something else. Think about something else. Just relax as much as possible yeah. until it's time to get my pipes out and tune up. Oh, beautiful. And, uh, how Tyler, how do you feel about pineapple on pizza? You know, it's got its place. It, but is its place That's, on pizza? <laughs> that depends on the pizza. Oh, okay. So if you're into pineapple on pizza, or even if you're on the fence, I suggest you go to Taboo Pizza in Ogden. And, uh, oh, I wish I could remember the name of the pizza off the top of my head. But it's got jalapenos, I got ham. you. I'm pulling up the menu right now. Oh, yeah. It's got like jalapenos, ham, pineapple on it. Oh, my gosh. 
I'm with you there. Like I I haven't been to Taboo Pizza, but I do feel like the ultimate the ultimate way to consume pineapple on pizza is along with jalapenos. When the two come together, that's that's where it's at. Yeah, that place is incredible. If even if you don't get the pineapple on the pizza there, you should check them out when you're in Ogden. They're uh, they're definitely worthy of a stop. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 kind of in that camp. Yeah, I'm I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it, and it's okay if people want to hate for it. And it's all right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> eat eat what you like. I think this is. I think it's the Island Reaper. I'm looking at their name. Ah, yes. Yep. Yep. That's it. They got some good names on here. The Valhalla sounds delicious. The right. Hot Boy. The Hot right. Boy is also delicious. So give them a shot. Sweet. Well, thank you, Tyler. I think that that's probably about.